All right, guys, welcome to Musicians and Minivans Eating Tacos, episode one, The Rise of the Broken with Kevin Rodriguez. Hello. How's it going, man? It's going good. I'm excited. Good? I'm excited for tacos, excited for good talks, and good driving around. Do you like tacos, too? Oh, yes. All right, bro. Always. Do you have a, a lot of good taco places where you live? Uh, kind of. Honestly, like most of the time, I have to just like make my own. Like I'll just buy the ingredients oh, yeah. and make my own because most of the time, a lot of the places are too Americanized. Mm -hmm. This place moved in maybe a year ago, I think, and it was just like, ooh, it was like more authentic. Mm -hmm. Like, to it in, so it's really good. I like the tacos, even like the Americanized ones, but I just know like if I'm craving like actual ones that like I'm used to, like I have to just get the ingredients myself to. Are you a corn or flour guy? Corn. Like, I don't mind flour. Like, I'll eat it. But if I get the option, definitely prefer the corn tortilla yeah. by far. I'm driving intentionally slowly, too, because yeah. my camera in the back already feels shaky a little bit. So people are going to think I drive like a, gra like a grandpa yeah. or something. Yeah, at least you're, we're in a minivan, so people expect that. Though. What do you think of uh, the Honda Odyssey, bro? It's, it's spacious, that's for sure. Like, definitely a good vehicle. I've had friends of mine touring in, in a Honda Odyssey. Really? One. Yeah. They were just touring like the like a minivan, and then they had the trailer hitch attached to it. Yeah. And they just pulled a smaller trailer. They didn't pull anything too big. They were traveling pretty comfortably. You got to travel in style, man. Let's get some tacos. Taco time. Okay, so you've been listening to The Weeknd? The Weeknd. Blinding Lights? Blinding then, Light. Uh, uh, I haven't checked, I checked out the other one that I can't remember, like After Hours or something yeah, like that. Yeah. But I like Blinding Lights the best. I just like the beat of it. Like, that's what I was like, dang, I want synth like that now. Yeah, you said on Instagram, playing live is like where you just feel free. It's like, you still get that feeling? Honestly, like, I feel awkward in the studios versus really? live shows. One, with the vibe with the audience, it kind of motivates you. Like, even like talking about like, kind of like the coronavirus thing right now, right? Yeah, yeah. How they're canceling all these shows. Cause like, people are like, oh, like LeBron James got made fun of because like, oh, you're only playing it for the money because he said, oh, I'm not gonna play a, a game if there's no fans. But you thrive off of that. You don't just go, well, I'm just winning because it's great. But you start going like, oh, I wanna make my hometown proud of the team. Or whatever. And if nobody's feeling it, it sucks. I mean, you're gonna be like, oh crap, I suck. Yesterday I was working with a guy and uh, he was just like killing it on this one part of the song. And I said, we gotta take one for Instagram. Yeah. Meaning I'll just turn on the camera, yeah. shoot you doing this, one take, the bridge part of the song. And because he knew the camera was on, the performance was killer. And I was like, you dude, did, okay, it nice. was good, yeah. I was like, he like brought this energy that I was like, I don't know what it is. Like When I was with uh, Jim Wirt, like in Cleveland, he was like, dude, play the recording like if you were playing to a thousand people. Why is that so hard, man? Do you got the headphones on? Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like, you feel like you're constrained like into one spot. Like you're like, oh, I can't really move because if I slide a little bit wrong, it's gonna sound a little bit off and blah, blah, blah. So you want perfection in a recording, which you shouldn't have perfect. Like this should be good, but it shouldn't be perfect where it's like, oh dude, it's just too clean because it's not realistic. There's a, uh, a live 21 Pilot song where it's him and a piano and like there's a there's a note that it's definitely not the right note. It's like yeah. a flat note or something. And yeah. I was like, at one level, I'm like, you're so big. How do you just let that go? But at some level, it's like, it's supposed to be yeah. like a live feel. It's almost respectable. Too perfect. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to be too perfect because it sounds like almost like, oh dude, like definitely not singing. First, first impressions? Actually really good. Yeah. They double up on the tor on the tortilla. Yeah, it's good stuff. That's how it should be. When they hold back on the tortilla, I'm like, bro, come on. Who takes your Instagram photo? Myself. How? You set the timer? Tripod and then I have a phone app on my camera like where I can control like the aperture, uh, the shutter speed, everything. Focus on my face every time. Yeah, it looks really professional. And then, I mean, there's a worst case scenario, like my wife is with me, she'll help me out, but 98% yeah. of my photos are just like myself going out and taking them. I really think of the ground level of like trying to build something, even as an artist, it's like, 
you gotta put in the work to do things yourself until you get to the level where someone can take your photo. Or you know what I mean? That's yeah, just a small I mean, well, the thing that, is, like, a lot of people just wait. They're like, oh man, if I had a manager, I'd be better. But I'd be greater. Yes and no. A manager can help you with the connections you don't have, yeah. but a manager can also just take your income and not do anything. Because I mean, at the end of the day, if a manager is good as how he says he is, and can help you grow and all that stuff. Have you ever worked with a manager? Yeah, I used to have. Was it valuable? Yeah, I mean, it was good for what I was at at the time. And then I started growing too much that he couldn't deliver, he would promise more, and then couldn't deliver like the bigger tours. Most of the stuff like I could have done in my own. The only reason I really benefited from him is just I didn't have time to be booking. The time, yeah, like, he's got the time. I didn't have the time to book my future tour dates while I'm on tour. Now that's a big deal too, is like, I was talking with Ali yesterday, or two days ago, and he said, he's like, I know logic, like, I can do a little bit of stuff in logic, but I come to you because you're so efficient at what you do. Like, you're just saving me so much time and headache. And I just f forget that you do have a skill, or I do have a skill where it's like, I have something to offer because sometimes you just don't, ha you're buying, you're saving people time. Why would you hire somebody to do your yard versus you doing it? You hire somebody because you know that, one, your time is either more valuable to like, give up that versus the cost of it. Yeah. And you know it's gonna be more efficient because of that. Or you can, you have the time and you don't care how long it takes you, like don't take your photos if you can't take them well enough. Just because you have an iPhone doesn't mean you have a phone, like a camera to do it. Yeah. And then it looks mediocre compared to everybody else. Well, it's quality difference, not quantity. Like I know you can take 100 photos of yourself and then go, why would I pay a photographer to take these photos for me? Yeah, but you're not doing it all as great as it should be. Well, the culture right now is that there are websites like Thumbtack, and actually I really like Thumbtack. I'm not bad-mouthing bad them at all, but like a lot of people will go there. It's like Home Advisor when you have a home project. You can say, I need my kitchen yeah. redone, and then get like 30 replies from different companies, and all of them are gonna say like different prices, and you know, there are gonna be the guys that had literally have just started, and are like, I'll do it for 100 bucks. And then there are companies that have been, or they're just killing years. it, yeah. you know? And they're doing like, $20,000 steps. In the photo industry, it's like that. In the recording studio industry, it's like that. I mean, you have to be skilled at what you do. But at the end of the day, it's really about what is the experience like for people that are working with you. Yep. That's why my Instagram, man, is like, I try to put so much of my personality and myself in my Instagram st story life, you know, because it's like, I could post, I could do what everybody else is doing, which is like, here's my picture of my speakers, and like, here's a picture of my here's gear. Here's me supposedly editing this yes, photo, and it's from behind, and that's it, you know? Like, by all means, different. post that once in a while, but how I view it is, you either have photos that determine who you are, like actual, like, things that, lead, like, verbatim sets who you are. Are. That's what comedians do. Like they'll make right, right, videos right, right, right. of like funny stuff, sketches, because that's people like, oh, that's how he is, literally. So a lot of the times that I notice is like to portray who you are, it's a gray area. Because a lot of them think, oh, I need to just do only this, or I need to do only that. I'm like, you have to find like the formula that works for you because everybody's different. Yeah, like yeah, everybody yeah. would have success if there was an easy like one, two, three step kind of like formula to go with. And that's why no yeah. matter who it comes down to that they try to sell you online like, oh, buy my course for this because it'll guarantee you sales or guarantee you more listens. You can't guarantee something that there is no actual formula step by step. People have a lot of songwriting stuff like that. Like here's the songwriting formula and stuff like that. And while well, you can learn a lot and that kind of stuff. You really kind of have to learn by just, like we're learning today, like literally, like what is it gonna be like when I go record this taco show? It's yeah. like, you just learn by doing. Yeah. Perfectionism is the worst disease to have as an artist, because most people that are perfectionists don't post content because they're like, oh, this can be better, let me not, let me just scrap it. Instead yeah. of going like, let me post it yeah. so that people see me grow. We it want it good. easy, man, yeah. that's the thing. They want like, a one-click solution. Yeah. Like, that's why that, that, that everything about yeah. music that you can buy that's like a one-click away, it's not even worth the money. Like, just go learn how to do it or pay somebody to do it. All right, bro, should we go uh, find a spot to play? Let's do it. Such a nice day today. I know. Hopefully we don't get the corona. I was gonna ask you, like, I know you've been thinking about like your music, your goals and stuff. Like what do you what do you hope to do this year, man? I wanna like just work on this new record and just kinda like 
be like put a little bit more planning behind it. That's why I've been taking my time with it. In regards to marketing, getting it out. Yeah, like the recording releasing is done. and stuff like that. Like yeah. yeah, well, like even with like the finishing up the recording of it, just to kind of do like. 110% with something that like I'm like okay yeah like now I'm like really satisfied with it just just cuz like it's something different but like with the uh, videoing now that I know more about videoing <laughs> than I used to so I want to like try to like make it like as a project for myself as well for like making like a music video with it just to see what I can come up with some guy was saying he's like cuz we were talking about video he cuz he was like mm -hmm. Releasing a song without a video is just like almost pointless. I agree with that, but the hard part is that the video part is honestly probably the most expensive part. It you know? costs you a lot more than recording. That's he was for getting sure, quotes man. of like five grand and all this kind of stuff. If you can't afford it, you just go with what you have, but at the same time, it's Dude, like. The thing is, like I said, it, it goes down to perfectionism. Like, just go with what you can. Like, yes, if you can afford a higher end music video that like all the bands are doing, sure. If not, have you ever seen uh, uh, Nothing Nowhere? So this guy, like, he's on Fuel by Ramen, and his videos look like they were recorded on a VHS tape. He's going for that look, yeah, quote unquote, yeah. supposedly. Yeah. But it fits him. Like, it just, it just it just works. I mean, like, if you genuinely like put the video out how you wanted it to be, mm -hmm. it'll be great. You probably should invest more in your marketing than your video itself. Yeah. Like, if you're gonna spend five grand, if you spent five grand to market your your song, imagine how many more people would you do. Even if you don't put a video yeah. out, like just just yeah, put yeah, yeah. like a lyric video that you can cost you 150 dollars. But if people are listening. Like, let's say you, you promote it for like, where blogs are gonna talk about it and then they're gonna have the Spotify uh, link to it or whatever to like have them listen because that racks up more than YouTube views in reality. Yeah. And then you start getting on playlists and then you start getting more of an audience that know about you. And if you spend five grand on that versus on a music video and then have to spend double the amount of that to really promote it well, because are you gonna spend $15,000? Highly doubt you have that as a up and coming artist. So unless mommy and daddy know, can pay yeah, for it. Yeah, it's like who has that upfront money? You know, you're a local artist. Like, Yeah, like, I mean, I, I know artists that do because mommy and daddy pay for it, but in reality, that's the smallest percentage out there when it comes down to those kind of artists like that's why you'll see like a lot of like kids like i remember playing a show in chicago and like the kids that we were playing with they had the most expensive gear everything like wireless in-ears wireless guitar set and i'm like dude if you would have put all that money into getting better at your music mm. like department kind of section where like mm. let me take better lessons or focus on this you would sound so much better with crappier crappier in, in theory yeah, um, yeah. equipment and play your instrument better like how many times have you seen a guy who has a basically almost broken guitar willie nelson does it yeah uh and they jack sound, black or jack not jack black he's uh, the comedian right yeah now. yeah no jack uh, white. Jack, Right, is this? Jack White or Jack, yeah, one of the Jacks. What? There's too yeah. many. Do the Jack Johnson. But Jack he's like Harry. known for like playing a crap guitar. Yeah. But it sounds awesome. But if you know how to make it play, yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is private property. Ooh. It's probably like if really we get arrested, then um, we'll just be like, we can call our wife. We'll I've been trying at this for hours I've been thinking to myself That these roads spread for miles And it's driving me insane I keep feeling what is ours I keep putting my cards in play And I've risked it all to be here today So tell me
There are things that I desire There's been things inside my brain That I never thought that I would feel inside myself again You're the fuel inside this fire The spark that fuels my rain Just know I'll never give up in vain So tell me Thank you. That's literally like one of like the more popular ones that I play. Yeah. That's really cool. What's the name of that one? Through Frequencies. Uh -oh. Yeah, so the record's called Frequencies and then, yeah. That song's Through right. Frequencies. Like the first one, I yeah. think. Maybe the second one. I can't remember right now, but yeah. Very good. All right, bro, this is called, I don't know what this is called. Oh, rapid fire, questions. What's your favorite guitar pedal? Literally use this blues driver. Uh -huh. That's like the only pedal I use. It's like an overdriver? Overdriver? No, it, it just, well, I mean, I guess kind of, but it just adds like good gain and everything. Like it just makes it sound nicer. Cause not that I don't like all these other pedals, but I'm just not a gearhead like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I just don't really. No, I love that, bro. Like some I've people ask me, like, too much into it. what kind of gear you have? I'm like, um, even my bass. I have my bass, and it's made of five different types of wood. But yeah. people ask, like, what type of wood is? It? I'm like, oh, I don't remember, man. Like, it's like it's wood. It's just dude. not important to me. Yeah, it could no. be a bad thing. I yeah, think some people I mean, think that's a bad thing. I mean, but I don't think it is because if you get caught up in how much all the gear sounds and everything like that, it's good to make it sound good but just don't get caught up with that that's why you go broke you just mentioned white oak but what is your favorite music venue out of the houston ones or maybe even one you haven't played yet yet i don't know i like the secret group for what it is i don't know that gives between a topic and secret group and white oak now i mean i used yeah. to love walters but that's not even around so gosh are you a tea or coffee guy i'm both oh, it okay. just depends on my mood really. at the same time just yeah. one straw one, for one the and one yeah and trade off you know but no like like right now i've been doing a little bit more coffee just because but like when i'm on tour like i would just do only tea what's a restaurant that we should try people should try in the woodlands uh, oh man it just depends on what you want like one place that i know uh we like that we go to it's like really just it's a chain kind of i guess but it's a crust pizza okay but they have this thai pizza that it's so good because it's like sweet and Mm. sour like like and then spicy chicken for me it's just like i don't know like i'm not really like i'm not a foodie kind of person oh, okay okay it's like i'll just use like peanut butter and jelly no i mean i like to cook more at home than going out to eat okay. because i know how i like my stuff anyway too and what i'm putting Do you cook it. more than your wife or your wife yeah i'm the one that cooks really, really. yeah that's awesome she she cleans more than i do mm. because, so we trade off that way okay what's an artist that someone uh should know about that you don't think people know about mm. Actually, like a band that like we've played shows with, they're called Picturesque. Um, they're, I mean, they have a good solid all around music. I mean, they have like that heavier, like post hardcore kind of music, but now they're driving into a little bit more like, I want to say like trap 
rap beats, okay. but with like alternative rock and good singing kind really? of style. So it's actually pretty pretty cool music. Like when we play with them, like I heard their new music because I saw them live with R last night forever ago. That's when they they came out their first record, I think. And they're like friends of my friends from Kentucky because that's where they're from. So they played shows together, and they're like, dude, you got to check them out actually when you go to the R last night show because they're on tour with them. I was like, all right, sure. So then I checked them out since then, and then like the promoter in Houston was like, hey, you want to play the show? Like we need bands. I was like, yeah, I'll play it. And then I heard like their new music, and I was like, oh, this is like actually pretty cool. So I'll have to check cool. them out though. It sounds interesting. Yeah, they're the, the guy's vocals are so high pitched that you're like his vocal range is extreme. Like he goes, he can go low, but he can go really high too. It's yeah. like a Kellen Quinn kind of style. Okay. What's your favorite key to sing in? Man, um, you're asking the wrong question there. I oh yeah. I don't okay. even know anything about the. You literally just play in what I sounds just play good. What sounds good. That's. Low. I don't know anything about music theory. I just go with what it sounds good in my ear. No, a lot of people are like that. So like, I mean, I remember when I was in the studio like in Cleveland and the guy was like, what key is this? And I'm like, you're gonna have to find out because I have no idea what you're talking about. He's like, well, play me the chords. And I was like, he's like, all right, this is the key of this. And I'm like, sure, sounds good, dude. Whatever you say, just how it works for me. I've been. I took like classes like a little bit, but never like stuck with them. I just, mm -hmm. I, thought them, I found them too boring for me. Or like they weren't at the pace that I wanted them to be. So just kind of like. I, I wonder if all your songs are in the same key or if they're different. I mean, I wouldn't know. It'd be yeah. good to. Somebody would have to do the research. Yeah, they'll have to kind of go like, yeah, it's key of whatever. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you, you you told me. This has been good, man. Oh, yeah. Appreciate your time. Oh, thank you. It's been it's been lovely, good food, good hangs, and uh, <laughs> literally enjoying a nice uh, sunny. Dude, it's such a great day. Day. I mean, most people are hiding because of the coronavirus, but. Yeah, I mean, you can't let that stop your spirit. That's how That's how you literally, I mean, if you really want to get technical, then never go out because you might catch anything. Mm. So it's like, if you start living in fear, you just don't live. So, I mean, like, to me, like, take precautions. By all means, don't just be stupid. Then just go like, hey, chill to everybody. How's it going? It's, it's like, dude, like, wash your hands. If you didn't know that already, like, I'm kind of concerned because mm. it's surprising how many people are hoarding soap we're like as in, yeah, I mean, it's good to have because you have it. Do you want some? I'm okay for now. Okay, I, I literally like wash my hands pretty frequently, but like I don't overdo it because it actually kills more germs in the worst way possible. Because especially like all those like, oh, like Purell, it's like there's like 99.7% effective. Mm -hmm. So you're basically creating like a, a, a big uh, bacteria for you with a 3% that's surviving. So then you're just like that one time that you get it, you're gonna be like screwed or whatever. So I like, feel like you're gonna get corona. Yeah, I mean, probably. I'll probably be like, next time, like, wash your hands, guys. I got the corona now. <laughs> Gotta be careful with, like, anything. It's like, you're not gonna go eat somewhere that you know is not clean. Yeah. So just kind of play it safe and stay hydrated. Not Bro. sponsored, but almost. Ooh, what if we were sponsored by Gatorade? Gatorade, get on it. 50 music. Bro, thanks, man. Thank you again for having me.